Hello, uh, my name is Louis Stein. I'm with the City of Pacifica at Public Works Department. I'm the Deputy Director of Public Works uh, for Wastewater. Today is April 2nd, 2019, and we're doing a documentary on the Equalization Basin Project. And to help us, I want to introduce you to our project manager, uh, Gene Berry. Hi, I'm Lewis. Uh, I'm Gene Berry with Four Leaf. We're the uh, city's consultant, uh, construction manager, and project manager for the Wet Weather Flow Equalization Basin Project. We'll refer to it as the EQ Basin Project. Uh, I've been on the project since uh, October of 2015 uh, when we started the initial design for the uh, project. The project was designed by uh, Friar and Noretta and their structural team of uh, Thornton Tomasetti and Construction Testing Services was the geotechnical engineer of record. Uh, the project itself is the result of uh, sanitary sewer overflows from the city sanitary uh, pipes on the Lindemar Basin or Lindemar area uh, that overflow during high storm events. So the water infiltrates into the ground, uh, infiltrates into the sanitary sewer pipes and that creates uh, insufficient capacity and because of that water in the sanitary sewer pipes ultimately go to the low point in the system and during high flow events water would pop up through the manholes and flow into this is diluted uh, sanitary water flows into the surrounding uh, residential neighborhoods and streets and also there have been discharges to the uh, Pacific Ocean so the Regional Water Quality Control Board issued a cease and desist order to the city of Pacifica in 2011 that the city had to eliminate uh, all insufficient capacity related sanitary sewer overflows. So the, the, at the time the city hired a consultant to do a, an assessment on how to uh, remedy the, the problem. So they did a feasibility study and ultimately throughout their evaluation they determined that the best course of action would be to build a 2.1 million gallon uh, uh, equalization basin that would be used to temporarily store water through these high storm events that would be diverted from the city side and stored into the uh, EQ basin. So at, at what point, at, at that point, the, if the treatment system and the pump station had enough capacity, we could pump water as needed out of the sanitary, uh, the EQ basin into the sanitary sewer treatment for treatment. Okay, so you're looking at the EQ basin. It's around 90% completed right now. And what we have is water from the street side is gonna be diverted by pipelines and it will enter the, the basin itself through this, this large uh, hole that they're coring through the wall right now. So that's a 30 inch diameter casing. The water will flow into the basin on that end. It flows into the basin itself. The water will flow into the basin. The floors were designed so they're sloped so that the flow will come to this center divider wall. And we'll have two sets of pumps on each side of this divider wall that that will pump the water out of the basin after each use. Uh, the other part of this, the design was, it was designed to be rectangular in shape so it fits the, the existing space of the parking lot structure. Uh, so that was built in a design. The other innovative design that the design team came up with is, is let's split the basin into two chambers. So we have a, you're looking right now at the north chamber. So this south chamber, or the uh, center dividing wall basically provides during smaller storm events we only have to use a portion of the capacity of the basin if the storm is large enough and enough water is diverted to the basin the water will rise up along the center divider wall and it will hit these two overflow weirs um, and the water will flow from the south basin over to the north basin if needed uh, the, the basin was designed with several features as far as allowing access for the city maintenance crew to enter. So along the perimeters of the south and north basin, or the chambers, we have catwalks with railings that, that the access or the city crew will enter. They'll be able to come in, we'll have water cannons that are being, um, will be constructed and put in place. They will wash down the basin after every single time it's used. That water will then flow with the rest of the flow and will be pumped out to the sanitary sewer system. Uh, they will also have access points along the center catwalk that will allow the uh, city crews to access the basin from that direction as well. We'll also have water, water cannons mounted on each side of the catwalk there that they'll be able to wash down the uh, basin from this angle here. Uh, what you're looking at here is we have these center columns are part of the overall structure. 
um, they support the roof of the structure because ultimately this part, this, this structure will act as the roof of the parking lot structure uh, that will be used for the community center. We'll restore this to the parking lot. Um, and so these center beams and, and uh, columns support the structure and support the roof itself. They also provide rigidity for the basin itself. Um, what you're looking at over there, as you can see, we have a large crane that's been on site by the contractor from early on in the project. That's used to lift materials in and out of the basin, uh, whether we have stair access, all the equipment, all the concrete, all that stuff had to be uh, entered into, or it was flown in, they say, the term is flown in by the crane uh, in and out of the basin. Uh, what you're looking at over there is, um, we, have, we constructed a sound wall along the perimeter of the basin because we do have residences on the other side of the, the basin to help attenuate and prevent some of the noise from hitting the, the residences. Um, you can also see that we have an existing skate park uh, that's continuously in use and we also have the community center that we had to make sure remained operational through our construction. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the, uh, this is known as the jacking pit. So part of the process, we have to get the water from the street side over to the basin and we're separated between the two areas by residential housing. So we had to use a process known as bore and jack to basically install our piping from the street side over to the EQ basin. So what you're looking at right now is this large sheet piles that are placed, they're driven into the ground, this provides your shoring uh, that you can then come in and excavate the soil out and create this large pit. Uh, once the pit's dug and it's firmed up, we then bring a large jacking bore equipment that sits in the bottom of the basin, it sits on rails, and it basically drives your casing from this side over to a pit that's on the street side known as a receiving pit. So that casing is a 36 inch casing that's driven approximately 170 feet over to the street side, and it receives the casing on that side. Once that's done, we will then run our conveyance piping through this casing and we'll, send, we'll use stabilizers and we will backfill it with sand. That casing will then, that piping will be then inside the casing that will convey the water from the street side over to the basin. Once that's done we will then backfill this area with sand or with soil, class 2 aggregate base, and then we'll remove the sheet piles as our final process. Okay, so as I mentioned, the project's around 90% complete right now. The next uh, main event that's going to happen, next uh, item, is going to be installing the roof planks. So the roof planks uh, were prefabricated at a, a, a fabricator down in Beth or Bethlehem Steel down in Bakersfield. Those roof planks will be brought in one at a time on trucks. Uh, they will place one, one plank at a time. Uh, that's going to start next week, so at, at this point we'll start placing roof planks on top of these beams in between, you know, and they will stagger them uh, per the uh, construction drawings. So once the planks are in place, uh, we then start with removing equipment from the basin. They have to still complete uh, completing the piping, running the electrical conduit, so that we have all of our motor control and our air vent system in place. Uh, at that point, uh, we're hoping that we'll have construction done around May of this year in 2019. One of the first things we had to do for the design phase is we had to go through and uh, apply for C or do a CEQA evaluation. That's the California Environmental Quality Act. So there are 17 criteria you have to evaluate as part of your project to make sure that the project isn't going to negatively impact the local and uh, larger area in general. So some of the things we had to deal with, I mentioned the sound wall earlier, making sure we weren't uh, adding too much noise to the neighbors. Uh, we also installed along this right side over here, you can see this orange exclusion fencing. So that's wildlife exclusion fencing. So we have an environmentally sensitive area to the left over there. Uh, we have to make sure that we didn't have any uh, San Francisco garter snake or California red-legged frog enter the site. So one of the things, one of the mitigations measures we implemented at the site is every day we have a biologist come to the site, they look at the site, make sure we have no sensitive species or even just any other like tree frog that's not protected, but they relocate non-protected species outside. So far we haven't seen any protected species in the area, uh, but they come through, they also provide environmental training to all staff that come on site, and also what to do if you hit an archaeological find or something along that lines, something we didn't have on the project. Uh, but this exclusion fence comes through, it prevents any um, sensitive species from encroaching onto the project itself. We also place up safety uh, fence around the perimeter site, that's to help keep uh, people from entering the site. Uh, we have safe security cameras that are up around the perimeter, uh, so in case we do have an intruder within the site. Uh, as you can see, this area here 
is the driveway entrance to the site. It created a lot of logistical issues during construction. As you can imagine, we had to excavate more than 23,000 yards of soil from the site and take it off site. So we had to do one truck at a time. It also created issues when we were bringing concrete into the site because you have uh, three concrete trucks that came at a time. It, always, it created issues for the site. So things that we had to work through as part of the construction process. Uh, all of the groundwater, as we're, as we're doing the excavation, we actually are dewatering the site within the basin, uh, but that was also by design, so we're only dewatering uh, groundwater within the basin, and we didn't dewater outside and create any potential subsidence issues for the skate park, uh, the local residences, or the community center. All that water's pumped through above ground piping, and it goes into that red storage tank before it is ultimately discharged to the sanitary sewer system.